Okay. Hey guys, it's Alexa. Um, if you are new here, welcome. Um, I just talk about my nursing journey, specifically my accelerated nursing journey. Um, so yeah, and if you're not new here, welcome back. Um, just don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can help you along your nursing journey. That is my goal here. So speaking of that, the fall semester is around the corner and that I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but this is pushing me to make it even more. So I'm going to explain or will try my best to explain or give tips on how to get an A in anatomy and physiology. This could um, go towards AMP 1 and 2 and lab. I use all these study tips to help me succeed. Um, so yeah, I got an A in anatomy and physiology one lecture, um, AMP one lab, and then I got an A in both AMP two lab and lecture as well. So, and I just wanna say, so leading up to this class, I was petrified. I so I graduated college in 2019, did not study much in college, if I could be completely honest. And then I worked for, for a year, maybe a little bit over a year in market research. Sorry, my group chat's going off. Um, worked for in, uh, a little bit in market research and then decided to take prerequisites again. And having that break from school really scared me to um especially hearing how hard anatomy and physiology is i was like oh my god here i am like i haven't studied in so long and i'm about to take such a rough course plus more but honestly i'm not i'm not gonna sugarcoat it it was a really tough course and you your mind just needs to be in it to win it basically and if you put the time in and use these study tips i can almost guarantee you that you will do well in the course um i put in a lot of time i'm not gonna lie i did not work during the time that i took my prereqs i really made it a goal of mine to get a's and i did so yeah it's a tough course but i want everyone to succeed because it is possible so i'm going to share my tips and i keep looking over here because i have a piece of paper it's very sloppy but i remember months ago when i thought of this video i jotted everything down so some tips that i have is so number one you're gonna have a lot of vocabulary especially i mean it's bo in both a and p one and two but in a and p one it's so much memorization that and it's going to be so new to you especially if you don't have a medical background you know you haven't taken like bio courses or whatever so i one thing that I've always done when it came to studying, not even just in this course, but like my whole life, <clears throat> I don't know how my mind works really, but I use like familiarity words. For example, um, I believe it's in AMP2, you're gonna learn about white blood cells. And one of the types of white blood cells are eosinophil eosinophils. And I remember learning that those come out when I think you're, I shouldn't say I think it's like those help fight off like parasites and stuff like that so my professor was always like don't eat sushi you'll get parasites and the eosinophils will help like combat that or whatever so when I think parasites and sushi I'm like ew so I think eo like ew eosinophils so stupid stuff like that pops in my head same with I remember in AMP1 I when we were learning about the parts of the cell like ribosomes that's for protein synthesis ribosomes rib like that's meat like protein you know like you see what I'm saying so that's the stuff that what I would think of and it still helps me to this day um I'll just share like two more like when you're learning about B cells and T cells B cells are uh, synthesized in the bone marrow T cells, thymus, um, made in the thymus, you know, so just stuff like that, um, that those really help me, uh, ma it makes these things stick. Another one, um, is mnemonics. So I, 
would uh, go to this online tutoring. So all my prerequisites were online because I took them all during COVID. When, um, oh, I can't even get my belt together right now. But we had a tutor. And for anatomy and physiology one and two, it was the same guy. Like, he's a retired RN. Like, he was the nicest person ever. He would always come up with mnemonics for us. And I can't really think of any right now. But I do know that there's one for the cranial nerves. One for the hormones of the pituitary gland. Um, so, all that type of stuff. Um, yeah, so the mnemonics definitely helped. Like, literally. But... Clearly, I don't know if they help that much if, um, you know, I can't really think of ones that stuck. But in the moment, to help your, to help you pass your exams, I definitely recommend learning some mnemonics. You can even Google them. They're everywhere. Next is flashcards. So, again, in A&P 1, you're going to be learning, like, everything. Like, AMP one is memori memorizing everything, the body parts and all that. Um, actually, I can't really say. I don't know. I did use flashcards for AMP one, but I think more so for AMP two because AMP two is when you're learning about the body systems. So it's definitely good to test yourself on the on the, some of the systems. Like um, I'm trying to think. Uh, why can't I think? I don't even know. But maybe even like the hormones you could test yourself on, the cranial nerves again. I'm using the same examples. Um, and then in AMP1, you need like the layers of the skin and all that, you know. So you'll definitely, you know, t have a feel for what you, what should you put on uh, flashcards and what shouldn't. Um, but those definitely help. They are time consuming. I feel like that's the only thing. For me personally, um, to re to write out the index cards definitely takes time when you have so much so much to study. But at the same time, it it's it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone because not only are you writing down stuff for the index cards, but writing things down will help your brain register everything more. So, you know that that's a good one. Um, rewriting concepts. A lot of people I feel like don't like doing this, but for me, I would read the textbook and I feel like I'm very like, I feel like I'm too much of a perfectionist, honestly, where I need to read the textbook or else I feel like I'm missing something and I don't want to miss out on class or anything, but I read the textbook before class, like the day or week before, week of, whatever, and highlight and take those key concepts that I've highlighted and rewrite them down. And this goes into one of my other points when it comes to like rewriting things. Apparently, one of my nurse friends, she um, read this and then I looked it up and it's true apparently that when you rewrite your notes um, on yellow paper like this in red ink, it helps your brain retain the information more and I I did it and I would sometimes rewrite it more than once and then I would highlight it and underline a million times and um I definitely think that that helped because just like again rewriting things helps your brain um register things more register facts more I was never the type to type my notes honestly I rewriting things help things stick um and plus, I can't, like, look at a computer for too long. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, like, I don't know, going senile at the ripe age of 25. But I like writing things down. And I definitely think that led to my success. Um, I'm not one to type my notes, honestly. But, um, but yeah. And let me see. Okay. This was a big one. And it actually took me a while to actually purchase it because I didn't think it would work. It just seemed like a little childish to me, but getting a whiteboard saved me. Um, it saved me time, um, saved me on paper. Um, this is the one that I got. I have it right here. It is literally from Target. I hope you could see, like, and you could probably see, like, my um, deodorant marks right now. <laughs> I'm going out in a little bit. But this whiteboard, literally, and and I think it's helpful to get colored 
um, markers too, not just black or red, green, whatever the basic ones are, but definitely a bunch of colorful ones. And I, I use this for all my classes, well, specifically AP one and two, and then microbiology. Um, but I would test myself and teach myself as if I were teaching a class and I would just basically as silly as it sounds like literally sit here rewrite everything and be like okay like just just testing yourself I <laughs> like I'm trying to remember it's been like a year since I took these courses but it definitely definitely helped and I mean I wouldn't suggest rewriting like all your notes on the dry erase board I mean I that helped me succeed with microbiology because I was like a one month crash course that I took over um, last summer um so every week was a whole new topic and each week maybe include like five chapters so I had to memorize everything but the whiteboard is definitely good and I would utilize that to teach yourself um okay okay the next one is having a study group so I took my prerequisites they were online well the first class or the first and second class of anatomy and physiology um, one, um, I thought I was signing up for an in-person class. So we go there the first day and then we're all told that it's now going to be online. So I was crushed because I was like, oh my God, this is such a tough course. And now I have to take it online. Like, how am I going to survive? Luckily though, on like the last day of class that we had in person, which was like the second day ever of that class, um, me and two girls exchanged numbers. Like out of nowhere like we just like made eye contact like about something the teacher said and then we were like oh my god like let's just exchange each other's numbers just in case thank god we did that because we ended up doing zoom sessions for every exam and that definitely saved me because when you guys have study sessions you know your ideas by bounce off of each other you could share each other's notes um and that was a major contributor to a major contributor to my success in this class and honestly it's just like support too it's having you know friends and peers around you or, or whatever that if you do uh sorry what do I, I think I hear my dog barking I don't even know sorry but if you don't do well in a, in a, on a test or whatever and you know you, you're feeling down, like your friends in that group like will obviously make you feel better. And then maybe you guys will study more or more in advance or something for the next exam. I definitely think it's crucial to have study group. And even I'm in a group chat now for my accelerated nursing program that I'm entering in September and we're already talking about study groups. So th right there, that's a weight lifted off my back. Um, and I know it's tough after COVID specifically and some people might have lost some social skills or whatever, but this could be like a great way to get back into back into that. Um, just turn to the person next to you, you know, like, and start start there. My my study group was just me and two other girls, like that's it. Um, so that's literally like all you need, even just one person. But yeah, definitely recommend the study group. Um, so this goes back to the um, flashcards, and I guess this this could go back to the study group too, but having someone um, around that could test you on things. I have my mom luckily here, I'm living at home. She tested me like she, with my index cards or like study sheets, whatever I made, like she would just test me on them um, at night, like if we were unwinding on the couch, you know, it'd be like on the commercials. I'd just be like, oh mom, could you just test me on these vocab words? And she would, and I really think that would that helped me because she would also mark down the ones that I were struggling on I couldn't remember or whatever and we would go back to them and I knew which ones to study so that is definitely something to um to do um let me see so I have two more tips and this this one that I have I a lot of people are all about Quizlet if I can be honest, I'm not the biggest fan. Maybe for some aspects I'm into Quizlet. I don't know. It's just like, first of all, I don't know how to make my own, my own Quizlet thing. And I never even tried. So just thinking of doing that, like putting that time into making a Quizlet when I could be physically writing things down and know that it will stick in my brain. I don't know. Like, 
I'd rather, like I said again, I'm gonna use the same analogy, like kill two birds with one stone, whether I'm rewriting index cards or notes or something like that. So I could test myself the same way Quizlet tests myself, except I'm actually writing things down and it's getting drilled into my head more. So I would sometimes use, like look up Quizlets on like certain topics maybe. I, I did it more so in AMP2 when I was um, learning the body systems. I honestly feel like maybe that is a good way to study use Quizlet for AMP2, not necessarily AMP1, because you're gonna really develop your own study skills for AMP1 to succeed, um, since it's a lot of information all at all once, a lot of memorization, that is when I would really do, um, like write things down yourself. AMP2, once you have all the background of AMP1, you'll, everything will just fall into place in a way, and then, you'll have the knowledge of you know, the body already. So when you put everything together, maybe then you could use a uh, Quizlet um, just for like summaries. Like if anything, I would personally, I used Quizlet, I believe, for like the last like day or two of studying. Like I did not really care to, for Quizlet. Um, and I also would give myself like a week to study. I definitely did not want to fall into the same trap that I did in undergrad and give myself like one or two days to study. Like, no, not even days, nights. Like, that's what I would do in undergrad. And I regret that, and for undergrad at least. But I, for AMP 1 and 2, um, definitely give yourself enough time. Because you know what? Life happens. Things could pop up. You could get sick. You know, you want to be prepared. And so the last thing is listen in class attend class um i don't even i mean honestly like i don't know if classes are still online or if you have that option watch the lectures attend class is number one i should have said that first but if you're still watching thank you and i highly recommend attend every class because if you don't do good on an exam at least your professor could also see that you're attending every class you know you have um like a hundred percent attendance try to participate ask questions you know you don't have to like give an answer but just like ask a question like don't be afraid honestly like in undergrad i was so like nervous and of being judged or whatever for asking questions but i don't know if it's because like i'm a little older now but i'm like i don't care i don't care what anyone has to say like nursing or whatever um, route you're, you just, you're deciding to take in the medical field it's tough and you're doing this to benefit yourself you know like at the end of the day like you're gonna have that a like the other person who's judging you isn't you know so who cares so ask questions attend every class listen and take notes like seriously like anything that the professor stresses like has like a little like I don't know, add some sarcasm, I don't know, not sarcasm, just like stresses anything, write it down, star it, put it in caps, anything, because that will be on the exam. And then anything that your professor does stress, re maybe ask a question, ask to reiterate it, Ma make sure you understand what the teacher is saying. That is huge. You know, like that, I thank God for my study group again, because we all caught things that maybe like each each one of us didn't you know I would star so much stuff and I'd like mention that in the study group and then it would always be on the exam but yeah paying attention huge one so honestly that is all of my tips for succeeding in anatomy and physiology again I will just repeat everything so familiarity words mnemonics flashcards rewriting any concepts, using your whiteboard, um, having a study group, have someone to test you, pay attention in class, Quizlet, attend class, and I definitely had another one, but I totally forgot because I didn't write it down. I thought of it while I was, while I was talking. But yeah, those are my tips for getting an A in anatomy and physiology, one and two, and I really wish you guys the most success if that makes sense like i really hope everyone succeeds may just study put in the time anyone could do it seriously like anyone could do it so yeah 
and before I end, I just want to say, please subscribe to my channel if you want me to help you along your nursing journey. If you have any questions, please let me know. My Instagram is in the description below and or just drop them in the comments. So yeah. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.